Lorne Shachta Di, Kiani Robert Shaw, Chach Trombone, just to hear go by La Hurvi Kedi. When he was not making a film, he just wanted to just be with the family and be in Tumakidi, which he loved. Oksha Mola, Intachton, Cantor Shaw. Agrava bit of Rinsha, Walsh and Cantor, Walsh and Adinigas, Walsh and Eilach Nahatia. He was a star and somebody that could talk about two other villages. We have a big actor living here in Tobacadi and shut down the road. <laughs> you know, there was nothing but cheap. <laughs> Name's Lonergan. Doyle Lonergan. I warn you, if any of my men are harmed, you will be held responsible. Let my name go on like the eagle, he said. Let every rich man in Mexico wake up screaming. What are you doing, fellas? You're making a documentary about this movie, then? I was born in Lancashire. Then we went to the Orkney Islands. And we lived in that little town, Stromness. All wind, no trees, black seas. My father, you see, was an alcoholic. He was a doctor. And he um, had a great uh, charm. That's the best word. He had enormous charm. When sober, he was the most likable man I ever knew in my uh, life. And when drunk, which was often very troubled, He'd come up into my bed when I was about seven or eight, midnight or something, crying. And so life for us was a series of um, crises. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. Some the war was on and they were very restricted with um, money. And he said that a lot of his evenings, they would just sit round in the dark with the radio on. And that's why that sort of brought him into that sort of life and feeling and acting and things, because they did have um, hard times. Sig Shay Le Rada, Oxen Shin and Yishin, Hashe, Nyarthama, Egg Play, Le Drami, Shakespeare, Oxen Shin, a draw, Lorna Gwegadi, a Hosig Shay, Egg Den of Drami, Nalina, Ogus, Er Hyanderson, a part of the Egg of the Port, a drama, a scribe, Shay Hain, off the mainland. Snakwegadi Homa, the pre of Fort Egg, um, is Strat Telefisha, the Buccaneers. I see the time has come to settle our little account. To the fool. Now, when I come back here, I want to see everyone alive and in good health. If not, Ní hóan gráir sé in Ashdor íntach ach ba údar é chomá agus scríobh sé nearth úrscéilte agus drámi a vúig lár dochtar the son doctor an pathrandan in Ijeg Shaskado. I think the thing about uh, Shaw as a writer was he was kind of coming in at the tail end of the angry young man movement. So that was all the people like John uh, Brain and John Wayne and Osborne and Colin Wilson. And, uh, it was a particular. It was a, an interesting uh, time in British literature in that it was a period when novels were novels of ideas. And Shaw was a writer of novels of ideas. The four or five novels he wrote through the late 50s and into the 60s were kind of the tail end of that angry young man phase. And they had notions in them, like The Flag, for example, which was my, my favorite of uh, Shaw's novels, was basically about socialism, about an evangelistic uh, preacher who went to a community in East Anglia and brought the Sinn Féin flag and the red flag, and was he was a very flawed character. I accept that I'm too good a novelist to have instant appreciation. But I mean, everybody wants it always. We all do. I would like to be appreciated by the intelligentsia, 
the fools, the comics, the alcoholics, everybody. Of course I would like that. I would then have to guard against, which I do uh, uh, anyway, as an actor, too much adulation, too much sycophancy. I mean, you know, I can work with a group of people who'll be trying to convey to me every day I'm the greatest actor on earth. Well, I'm not. So the novels had substance, so there was there was worth in them. But I think finally, um, he, he would have been exhausted by the business of running a double career. The requirements to be an actor, not just an actor, because he had aspirations to be a Hollywood actor and an international actor and a star. And that requirement against the kind of literary intensity of what he was trying to do with serious writing, I think was probably compromising to him and exhausting to him. So first phase of our offensive was a success. The element of surprise was complete. The American communications are in a turmoil, but we must cross the Ur River before the enemy realizes that we have launched an all-out offensive. The sun is out, and the war waits. A visitor to the set, Robert Shaw's wife, actress Mary Ewer. And the war must wait. The Shaw family, a huge mass of people, and there's 10 children, um, three marriages. Um, first marriage, uh, four children, four daughters. Second marriage, uh, two daughters, two sons, and I'm the, I'm the oldest son in that second group. And then third marriage, um, one son and one inherited son. My father was married to his first wife, um, Jennifer Burke. Um, they had a, my mother and my father had a liaison. I was the result of that. Um, ultimately, um, my father and his first wife divorced. My mother, Mary Yaw, she was a, an actress who was probably of a higher status than, than my father was when they met, almost certainly stage actress. His wife Mary was lovely. She was uh, very quiet to meet. Um, I think she was, had very strong uh, views herself as well, but she wouldn't have expressed them so forcibly as Robert did. She, of course, was a film star in her own right and starred in Where Eagles Dare, but she'd mainly been a Shakespearean actress before that. Some couples are very quiet and polite to each other. They were reasonably robust in their relationship. Their relationship was stormy. Both of them um, were very strong characters. I didn't have a negative view of that. Um, they were, there were a lot of rows and a lot of fantastic um, moments as well. In the chilly hours and minutes of uncertainty, I want to be in the warm heart of your love and mine. So we spent time in Spain. Uh, we spent time in, uh, um, you know, in Los Angeles, um, New York. I probably did more air miles in the first half of my life than, than you know, than I'll do for the rest of it. Oddly enough, airports, I, I do think of my dad. Um, it's kind of like in some ways where I re remember him the most. He had a presence, definitely, that wasn't like a normal person. He just had something that made you sort of just stop and think, what the hell is this, you know? So, um, whatever that is, <laughs> he had it. I can remember sitting around the dinner table. We had a big dinner table, uh, obviously, with all those children and I would try and sit next to him. And there's a pecking order, so um, I would gradually get shifted down um, to the end, but it was okay, because then I was right at the end and I could, I could see him. Obviously, he had an influence on me. I wanted to be like him or whatever, which was not necessarily to, to do what other people think you should do. How would you describe yourself as a man of action, a dreamer, a thinker, a romantic? Oh, both, I think. Uh, I'm very romantic, but I'm also uh, quite practical and I'm full of physical energy. Um, a dreamer, yes, I am a bit of a, I, I am a, bit of a dreamer, but um, I mean, I, I'm a kind of blend of these things. He knew as well as anybody that it was, it was a matter of luck as to whether you were going to actually be successful. You could be the best actor in the world and if things didn't fall just nicely in place, if the elements didn't just come together and the stars cross, then you could produce a fantastic um, performance 
and it wouldn't make you a buck. You know, it would just, you had to be in the right place at the right time um, to carry it off. And he was, but when he was successful, he was already at a very advanced stage in his career. For the Anunukan Oscar, Dun Ashdor is far a role takiyachta. Dun skanan a man for all seasons. Nur runche Leru er Henry the Eighth. Because it's Leru if we let a viaun. Because it's soka. It's more and through a nach orche on Oscar on Thomson. A character if we let a viaun. Um, because hugshe Leru if we let er Henry the Eighth in sinskanjin. Because haring she galor ar der hein. Because es soka an shina chosik dini eg eg torch role in ella do is skanan America. Because for the immersion. I think the film, the movies, were well, because he had to pay the school fees, mostly. I mean, he would like to have been writing books, but he had, you know, eight, nine children, ten children in the end, and um, you know, the school fees were huge. He did enjoy doing his films when he when he got good ones, but he did some really not such good ones. But needed the money. Needed the money. It was a time when the film world was going through a difficult phase and he told, I think it might have been his London lawyer, that uh, he'd been offered $100,000 to s star in a dreadful film where he played the part of the drunken Irish priest in a spaghetti western. Um, and what should he do? And the advice was $100,000 for six weeks' work, take it like a shot. Shall we repent then? They say it's easier to repent of those sins you've already committed than of those you intend to commit. If we have one, I intend to commit a great many. Yes. He couldn't live in England anymore because the tax situation was so terrible. I think it was 98p in the pound. And he was told by his lawyers and everyone else, everyone else, you have to move. They started going over to Ireland, the two of them, Mary and Robert, and looking for places. It took them quite some time and they were getting very frustrated because they couldn't find anything that was suitable. They did drive through, through all the back roads and whatnot and ended up on the shore of Flock Mask and apparently Robert said, well, what, if there's a shack at the end of this avenue, we must buy it. I just absolutely love this place. Well, there are Honig Robert Shaw, and Shaw had to need a shock to Kuig. Agus Honig Shaw and Shaw stood here for the Bagan Sivnisal on Seal of Viege. A Gnami Shagra had to stood here less than Kursi Skananiakta. And well, it's a Macapo Crow, it was Gunmila and Ocean Agus. Vi mannen kan gå helt rätt gå för att han kör en tamsen och så vi brödig kan kan gå mycket så gärna tror jag en orsen. Vi har skön gå gå helt en gång gå på det mannen kan gå helt rätt och så vi din jag nu gå helt rätt till jag gå på det han och så är korsjus sen av det kan han. When he grew up himself, he was growing up in Cornwall. Um, where he went to school in Truro and um, in the Orkney Islands as well. So it's a, it's a similar sort of barren landscape. I think it, it suited him to a T. That's what took him to the west of Ireland, really, because that's, he was thinking of his own childhood and he wanted his children to be brought up in that sort of environment. Kenny Robert Chachrumbon, August uh, Horisha Egus, we draw while air, Eganam, August Marvin Shai Liki, 
bi shan van le khoni an le spi nach le kishis wi shan nach an ali ev roch na locha agis nitsach tumpel mile wen shis shis and shin They shouldn't plunk it a hoig and tach or that's what plunkers. Hog shed out any Catherine as the object. Tasha roach like mask, a sea of alling, guardian alling her temple there. Ned a hoig grabber shawl, a raw there. Neil Sagam Keho, ear gult a visha, a Gorsha emi her gul or valach. I guess a Hersheshan Gulor Edig the Shahan Hogsha over the much in the hot rain chef house and tach. I guess a he loved the landscape. Um, he loved the fact that he 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 wasn't in under the spotlight. Near Hershishin Shahar in Mar Nivek Dini Gulligan, Picture and Naganam, I guess, Monomarshad RT, New York Shakurishah and Nerchin or in Nisha Consolation is near Marisulger, Railed more Hollywood Vian, Marshin, just Parabin a horny here in Drumbon. Hushahan, if I am in the Dini in Shah, he had the Dini who I met. Cheshin Hushah, Gus Grinshahan, Lon Fortach, Gunholo, the Rivian Shaganam. Agasinchen <laughs> He had everything within easy reach because he had um, Paddy's pub um, just just down the road, which he loved visiting as often as he could. Um, you could actually get into a boat at the end of our pier and just and, and row you row down to Paddy's and, and get your pint. And uh, providing he was there and not out on the lake himself, you know that was the thing. He would drink. He would drink. He'd sneak down there without my knowing. <laughs> and if I came down to find him. He would surround himself with everybody that he knew. He would say, well, I've just got to give them one more pint, you know. We should not know. The only thing is that my pint is not a lot of people who are not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. Robert, I think you were weighing up these characters. We'll probably have a film sometime, and you'll be, you'll be develop, you'll have the Tom McKay accent. <laughs> Why spend your leisure, be reft of pleasure, amass and treasure? Why scrape and save? Why look so canny at every penny? You'll take no money within the grave. Well, if I beg an option, I'm so cool. Talk to all and shouldn't hear. I was talk paddy fresh and. I was in Pub Mord, so I go back next morning and see what I look. I was here's a option, and you close off a little barely behind. We go, we go, you 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 Marshin da vishin nil part ni eschema na vega shiri khair prab sonol vi antore geren in tahim baktar ni shagas to mahapu wera wangar hil she khanach ach ni ran se megen onere gename yilish vi se mege against the ganter ach vi se mege gnyant vi dolchen ken Ellen Ganter, Gomorbor and Prevrod Miss Ganters on our fellow merit. I guess Ta Glor Tal of Hus and Chos, the Crick, no Tonasol, Lagus Marchand, Vishakapa, 
Bedja da beti lasso khirer tornasale. Eh gamakhan an seal nis power igna pelamori. We plan a beja helicopter ro looks in lasso shan khirmakh. Arnoy eh from la ta new on yik fi ro lehj yana. But we shall go next smino er valley khan an eh seal nanini also exakhir khin kin. As Jim Bond progressed they I think he put some cattle in there himself. Didn't have a particularly good experience. Uh, so I think the second time he approached my father and asked him, would he buy some cattle for him? So he came back to him and says, yeah, he, he, he would do on condition that they went 50-50. In other words, if they made money, they made it together. And if there's money lost, then no one could say that he did Robert Shaw. Hoxha course of golf, I guess, uh, well, Gar course of golf, we are going to be follow the on. If we do not need ball image on TK news, we do not see TV to not use a couple of women. I guess near a five big hill, let me mention the heart, you won't work us on the heart, you know, drama or she's, I guess, doing the golf image. As children growing up there, I probably spent most of my time playing golf with my father. You know, he would, he was big into his golf. He would be very annoyed, you know, with bad shots. And uh, I think even more annoyed if he lost the game. <laughs> we were playing in Connemara Golf Club in, in Bally Keneally, and we were traveling out and there was a church out in the middle of the hills in Connemara. So we decided we'd go into the church and we went in and uh, there's a visitor's book inside the door. So we all sort of said a prayer and Robert went up and he said he'd have to sign this book. And he wrote into the visitor's book, praying to win. I had a personal incident with him one time which might demonstrate the competitiveness where um, we were playing in a four ball at Westport and we were playing as a father and son against a, 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 a couple of local guys. And uh, I had a putt to win the match. And this, you've got to remember, I was only probably 16 and I missed it. We won the match. He made the putt to win the match. But I, as his partner, I, I'd, I'd let him down. So we got back in the car and he wouldn't speak to me. And we drove, drove back to Tilmakidi. And uh, eventually he said, you, you missed the putt. You, you weren't trying hard enough. And we had a row and he said, get out of the car. And he dropped me by this, out in the middle of a bog, bog land, the arse of nowhere, and uh, drove off in a fury. So I was left, I watched the car disappear down the road. I started hitching a lift, and then I saw, he must have reconsidered, and I saw the car appear again, and it was coming back for me. Um, but I was too proud. I, I got off the road and I hid, and I let the car go past. So he was off looking, searching for me to, to make amends for our row. And I, I did find my hitch. A car stopped for me, got back to the house. I was absolutely delighted with myself that I'd made it back. And he'd spent hours looking for me. And I knew that I'd punished him, you know, for throwing me out of the car in the first place. But, you know, it, it wasn't worth it because he came back and he was just crestfallen. He knew he'd made the original mistake. And uh, so my triumph was short lived because. Um, the atmosphere was awful. It's all about his competitiveness. Um, Mary came home to lunch uh, uh, with, with Robert, and I was cooking this roast leg of lamb. Um, and it was quite a long time. I'd done all the vegetables prepared and the regular. So Robert said, come on, come on. This is, this is Robert Shaw now. Come on, Sarah. You promised me a game of ping pong. Come on, come on, come on. So Robert, my Robert Bolt was happy to be with Mary Yeo, who wouldn't be? So we go out of the kitchen and up into another building, which is the mill, to, to play table tennis. Now, I happen to be extremely brilliant at table tennis. And uh, we played the first game and, of course, I slaughtered him. So, change, he said. So we change ends. OK, off we go. So we did another game. So I won again. Change! Yeah. Oh, change! And now, I do know that he kept on saying change. We had probably played about 10 games by now. And I knew that I had to go, you're not checking anything until I won a game. You stay here until I won a game. So play another game. Change. 
And then my husband, Mary Ewer, appeared. He said, what are you doing? The, the, the lamb's overcooked. But they had to drag him out of that room. I wasn't going to concede to him. Why should I? <laughs> he just can't bear it, you know. I don't know anybody quite like that. I think he was anxious about not getting a film because he needed the money. He used to say, oh, we're going back to Grimbourne, wonderful, we'll be in Ireland for months and months and months, and um, it'll all be, you know, just what I want. And after about three weeks, he'd be ringing his agent saying, you know, is there something coming up? You mightn't see him for, for ages, could be six months, and then he'd be back and might be here for three months. And then he was gone again, you wouldn't even know he was just gone because his agents would have had to work for him, and that was it. Our telephone number was Tormikidi 2 and we were on a party line. I think there were three of us. And um, Robert discovered that most people knew that he might be leaving and going off again because he always wanted to say to everyone, I'm staying as long as I can. And they would be saying, well, mm, we thought you might be, you know, leaving us again. And it turned out that they were on the party line. They were listening to most of his conversations about whether he's going to make another film, <laughs> how much money he was going to get, and <laughs> everything else. When we were shooting The High, we both received these Hollywood scripts, and his was um, The Sting. And mine was a thing called A Man Who Loved Cat Dancing, opposite Burt Reynolds. And I'll never forget him saying to me, I bet mine's the bloody winner. I bet mine's better than yours. I'll never forget him saying that. And of course, mine turned out to be an absolute tragedy. And, and his um, turned out a whacking great success. So I remember I saw him and he went, <laughs> I won that round. <laughs> he liked to win his rounds, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Tough luck, Ron Ann. But that's what you get for playing with your head up your ass. <laughs> a couple more like that, we can all go to bed early. <laughs> Name's Lonigan. Doyle Lonigan. You're gonna remember that, Mr. Shaw. You're gonna get yourself another game. Your father. It kind of airs gone on of when Clue Ugs Callamach, though, when Jay and Linus Mo Clue Ugs Callamach is though, or Hesh though, a vet in Jaws, August and Larry Rinishay air quint on an Shalgara Sharkana and Jab a via get in St. Kanshin. This is Universal's extraordinary motion picture version of Peter Benchley's best-selling novel, Jaws. He didn't want to do Jaws. It was perceived by him as, as being a silly concept. I mean, I think he would have revised his opinion. That's a 20-footer. 25. Three tons, Alan. Hurry up, he's coming straight for us. Don't screw it up now. Don't wait for me. Now! I think uh, the role of Quint in Jaws was so good because it was him. It was a rattled old, burnt out uh, character, disillusioned by life, who had suffered in, in, I think, in Shaw's case, by his own too intense passion for books and for uh, cinema. And I think that sense of disillusionment and, and tiredness and, and the wisdom that comes from failure really infused that role with a great power uh, that he never matched before or after. 
Robert Shaw, a man of many talents, author of five novels and three plays, champion athlete in school, plays Captain Ned Lynch. I always tried to be different. I, uh, I went that road very early. I mean, I never wanted to be a conventional leading man, you know, in the John Wayne sense, or whatever you call it. Uh, I never speak like I'm speaking now. I'm always in a German accent or an Irish accent or a... In the sting, it was Northern Irish. This, uh, now it's uh, Sligo, which is the Republic of Ireland. The Jaws was my imitation of a Massachusetts fisherman. And uh, I thought the Jaws was probably the most strenuous picture I would ever make. But that was a holiday compared to this. A draw uh, Yerry in a Shachto de Mershin is Dulco Gur Hustig uh, Robert Shaw, Xmin of Air Horsey Arigat Nismo, no, um, is Dulco uh, an an Klux call of Winchay Machlis gone on. Um, it rain a Shachto de Vishay got a part in since gone on more, if you went to Kind Air and Shin Jaws, the Taking of Bell and One, Two, Three, Sting, Ugs got him with Mershin, Ugs, Shin a book, Winch at those in a Havenus gone on dead on my gappa. And Shin is the Ruh, a Hustig Shay, Dinovest gone on her nose, um, the Deep, uh, a town called Bastard, uh, the Swashbuckler, uh, Ruddy Mershin, Ugs is the Ruh, Mur Nani and Dini, Nanam Nakashin, um, and more power to the swashbucklers and daredevils and actors and the fun they bring us. I, I think Shaw was possibly overladen with passion. He was so ambitious. He was, you know, I, I think there are very few actors that have careers that are writers and actors as he was in the 60s. And that was really his golden period that have so much going, so much happening at the same time. I mean, I can't think of anyone who's who does that, you know, as, as a, a double game. But I think Shaw would have needed time to finesse uh, an acting persona. To be a lead, You, it's, it is an act of calculation. I don't think Shaw had the time. And I think by the time he had the opportunities, he was exhausted by his own personal life and by his own demons to the point where he was drinking and he was a little unfocused. So he lost that moment of discipline that was required to uh, to hone a persona that could have been a leading man persona. I think he lost his chance. My mother died and her death uh, cast a long shadow over him. Both of them had that fatal uh, flaw that they had issues with alcohol. Again, he brought a lot of pressures on himself, probably, um, by having such a large family. Um, throw in a divorce and the death of a wife. There's a lot of potential demons to hang things on. He flew back to Ireland with Colin, who was actually in London with them when his mum died. And Robert just went to bed. And so I had to get quite strong with him and say, you know, you can't just stay in bed all day. You've got to get up. Mm. Kids are all need you. So he was really shattered. He positioned his writing desk at the front of the house, looking down the hill towards the lake. Um, and it's just about as, as beautiful a spot as you'd ever want to, to write, you know, to think and, and to write. And so I think he wanted to, to get away from um, people to some degree. When he was not making a film or working, he just wanted to just be with the family and be in Twinkie, which he loved. It was the perfect environment for him to continue writing. What a wonderful place to end up, gazing down, gazing out of the window, down to a beautiful lake. You know bloody well in a few years' time you'll be dead, and so what there might be in my case, nine books on a bookshelf that nobody's reading anymore. I know a lot of people look upon me as successful. And when I complain, they think, how dare he complain? What's he getting so angry about? 
Well, it, from my point of view, I don't feel successful at all. Uh, of course, failure always makes one reshape one's pattern. What is sad in life is the people who have got genuine talent who failure beats. Failure knocks into the ground. No, failure isn't going to knock it, me into the ground until I'm too tired. That's what I'm saying I've got to fight against, exhaustion. Robert and I were going to Castle Bar for him to sign some papers. And we stopped at the post office and he went in and, and got, got the mail and came out laughing. So he and Joe Brennan had been laughing about something and came out laughing. I had Tom in the back, who was a year and a half, and uh, an arranged rover we had. We'd only gone a short distance and he said, you know, I don't think, I don't feel terribly good. And anyway, we drove a little bit further and he stopped the car right in the middle of the road. And um, he says, I think I'm going to be sick. And he opened the door and jumped out and went to the side of the edge of the road. And he sort of choked. And to my horror, he fell. So I jumped out of the car and ran round. Um, I managed to get him back up. He was all covered in scratches and so was I. Um, and um, eventually I managed to pull him and push him and he tried, but he was actually not in good state. We got, got him back onto the road and he sat down. He said, oh my God, Jay, I think I fainted. I think I fainted and I said, well, just sit down, don't move. Just put your head down and um, you're, going to, you're going to be all right. And a car came along and it was a guy that I recognised and he sort of said, what's the matter with him? So I said, well, he's not well. Would you go back to Dr Brown? I know he said, you know, has he got drink taken? And um, I said, no, 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 just get Dr. Brown. He didn't go anywhere near Dr. Brown, he just disappeared. And then another car came, and this guy I knew really well, and he said, what's happened? And I said, well, I don't know, he's, he, I, I, I'm really worried. I don't know what is, what's the matter with him. Well, we see at Thieber Moher, I guess we see in your house, row away. I guess there's a van here, Lumsa, and Dr. Raul. I guess for me, Dr. Brown of the end. I guess how next she, I guess, we shake brand new Robert, I guess, to chill on the door, I guess, glare her an ambulance. By now, Robert was sitting, sort of going like this, and and so I said, well, he's he's fallen over the wall, but he's been choking, and his lips were going blue. And he was starting to shake because he realised something awful was happening himself. I was going to close to it, Vian. I got no shame. I got to ask me to do anything to get some money. Hey, hey, Vian. But I was sure that he was more. I got to be in a bad way, Margera. I got clear she had an ambulance. So I said, I'm going up to that cottage. I'm going to run up there, Robert, and I'm going to take Tom. Um, and leave him with them, and I'll get a blanket. And Robert kept saying, no, don't leave, don't leave. I don't want you to go. Stay here, stay here. We were in Ladberg, Thomas, I guess, Virginia, I guess, and she was in Ladberg, so she was in Ladberg, and she was in Ladberg. And she was in Ladberg, 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 it's an ambulance lish. And I got down and, and just Dr Brown walked towards me going like this. I just simply couldn't believe it. Absolutely awful. So don't run, you know, in other words. It was dreadful. It was absolutely dreadful. You know, rather be on doctor than doctor could you you know is she none. And I just kept thinking, how are we going to manage without him? Because he's just such a huge... I mean, I knew we would 
we would all be together. The children and I would always be together. But it was just, it's just terrible, terrible. And he, they had turned him over, so his face wasn't, it was in the mud. Uh, well, not mud, but because he'd been sitting there, it was, you know. And, um, and I just, just looked at him and he just looked so perfect. He didn't look as if, you know, I just couldn't believe it couldn't believe. I just kept saying, he's not dead. Uh, Dr. Brown's got it all wrong. He couldn't have died in those few minutes. And, you know, the last thing I have ringing in my ears, don't go, don't go, doesn't matter, you know. I just couldn't believe it. It was just dreadful. There's no reason really why he shouldn't be here. It's just that he lived life at, at a pace which um, didn't allow him to survive. Um, he was part of a generation of people who um, thought, you know, if you out drank the next person, the next hard actor, um, that made you... Look, well, it's gone back to the competitive thing that in some way um, made you his superior, you know, I don't know, not his, his superior, but it was a different, it was a different way of doing things. And 51, he, he's dead, like, that's shocking, really. Um, he left a big mess behind, because <laughs> some, some, there were still 10 children there, and my mother had beaten him to it, she had already escaped, so, um, Virginia was left in a position where she had to then pick up the pieces. Lord Bernard Foster, the man who was so on 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 tour, we heard the show more than you. I got the hacks, I got the scan, I made him go to the to marry her. Then she, I got the doctor to go to Kalu, Robert Shaw, he was over. I got the. You know, I didn't be a soul, I was far more, more. I was very happy to be able to get the bread, the scoff on the hill, and the oak, you know, more on the sugar. We were able to get a fair lodger, a fair grown the place has a lot of potential. Go war and loch, I guess, go war in the creek, I guess, the Danish will hold machine. Never be mit ex mino at Kerdacher mit Ernacht, we met a gold le Virginia. Agus near a mit we met a gear a husband, gur far we bill, gur a brevet, a gusker hotel, a bandslash, a being a honey, so not show. Da Vrishan and Rudacher mit Ed and Clochsha, no gur far. A honey sonacha, ni far a water sonacha. Honey shes a night, mar bish a ran fortach, a seal na hot. I mentioned on, on my radio show this morning that Richard Dreyfus is going to be on the chat show tonight, and I hope you all tune in and hope you like what you get. And we got a text in from a 14 year old girl from Kilkenny to say that her granddad was in Jaws with you, and his name was Robert Shaw, an extraordinary actor of his generation. And I said to her as we were chatting, she said, I'd love to meet him. I said, well, why don't you come up to the show tonight and, and meet him? And I introduced you to her in the green room before the show, and you, you, you got so emotional. And you, you broke down, and you, you hugged her, and you said the nicest things to her about Robert Shaw. Why did you get so taken well, aback? I it was like a closure of what? some kind, you know. Jaws was my 
Those was one of the first films. Sure. And when I met her, it was like closure. That was the first word I thought of. And you have no idea how grand and large he was. Yeah. And it was like, it was like he was alive again, you know? He died far too soon. And I, I, was, I was thrilled to meet her. I was like, I'm going to show my glass. 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 Vi ser han när du är här freshent. Nilles kom kade hörla och vi sägs naska gwin. Agus just hosig she egg kina agus hosig she barog mor dom agus just si she she är snacklam mag hosig she egg lärt vi skälta vi egg vi är nås sim egg kade är misshagen av agus kade är mo helmar agus oh vi ser arrest vi ser ane jastam. Gåni boalom like. Gameg chance of one of when Eric all I guess um you know honest go fade lash are chalking took I guess are core dogs cadi in and with dogs you know to Freddy Aguirre of my ash tour I guess to go touch a gas tour and go tamalin and ish I guess touch a gain took I guess I go need like that Mars is there and dad um. I go only be in Rodig and Gakila law a current she and Agna doing. I guess Tashi, you know, Tashi on him ulak. But all them grab she on show and ish come with Eck all. Gakra the Willis on for you, Robert. It's oh my dad, you know, Dorchi Gakra long. I was just down my Lemacord and Rod Kena. My Dorchi long grab she. I glorious gone on. I guess Nakini's fire long. It's really much in. Tashi different. Like Neil Rodi Marshall and Gaklan. Ak agus is malam a veg inchent dini fui. Ak nilshe special ti no shir niash tor misha. Just sonny bro do loss Robert agus shine. Ne shachta ti ne rohane Robert cha ansha vi kulra ikanamichta sitir fad. Vi munchen a hatche eg fogal eg al gamerika. Hasta bara agus braga. Because Peter and the Valachin got hug Robert Shaw and Burr, Augustine Spragish and the Winter Nahatse, Ugsha Fustiat Hod, Ugsha Mortis Hod, Agus Mardors may be Simeg a Gorsi Felamirta, Agsi Gorsi Tarasorta, Agus Anwer of Fursha and Chance, Ugsha Mulla, Intacht and Cantor Shaw, Agrava Bit, Rinsha, Walsha and Cantor, Walsha and the Dini, Agus Walsha and Oilach Nahatse. I stole away and cried. There's not a day goes by or, you know, that there isn't, I don't see some kind of reference or think of him. It's, and because his image is out there all the time still, he could walk into this room now and I would barely blink. For a long time, I thought maybe it was some kind of elaborate tax dodge that he was living in South America and he would make himself um, you know, apparent to us again at some point and just say, I'm really sorry, I just had to go do this, you know. And I suppose I don't believe that anymore, but I mean, I, it's the same kind of thing. I don't really feel he ever went away, you know. And it's true, he's frozen in time. You know, people who die um, younger and are frozen in time, um, there's... Although it's, that's awful, it's, it's, there's a benefit to be gained by that. I never saw him broken. You know, he was a big man that was strong and was lovely. And I never saw him become an old man. Good deal. It's nice to have those films, obviously, there. Um, but I still would have rather he was around, you know, however old he may be now, you know. I still miss him. Yes, and he was a friend of mine. He 
Every time I think his name, God, I just can't keep from crying.